So I'm not gonna lie, I haven't always been the biggest fan of the Silverado. I've always been more of a Ford guy, recently really liking the Rams. And the last few iterations of the Silverado, I haven't even really had the opportunity to drive. For 2019 though, the Silverado is all new. This is the fourth generation truck and it was first showed off at the Texas Motor Speedway. Now I was supposed to be at that event Something happened, I couldn't make it, and it's taken till now for me to actually get behind the wheel of the all new Silverado. And I'm really happy that I got to spend a full week with this vehicle instead of just a few minutes at an event because I actually really quite like it. So enough with this, let's just jump into it. All right, and before we actually jump into this specific truck, let's check out the trims and the different configurations you can get this truck in. There are a lot, but we're gonna hit them really quick. So your base configuration is crew cab, double cab, or regular cab. And what we have here is the biggest interior with the crew cab. Trim levels start with the work truck, and then you get a custom, a custom trail boss, then the LT, and the RST, and then the LT Trail Boss, the LTZ, and the top of the line is the High Country. So the one we're driving is the LT Crew Cab. It's definitely not the top of the line, which I'm pretty excited about. I don't like it as much when they send me the top of the line trucks or any vehicle, because that's not really the one that you necessarily are gonna be buying all the time especially for me. And this one in particular has a few things that as a family man, I really like, and we'll get into that as we get into the truck. But first let's take a look around the exterior and see what's going on here. So I was definitely one of the people who were quick to criticize the previous few designs of the Silverado, but this is 2019 and it's an all new truck and all new design. Starting with the front here, we get all new grille designs. For the LT, you get this chrome center bar with the bow tie proudly displayed here in the center. You get these LED headlamps with this cool little design. I like the thinner headlights and the nice little push in design that they have here, much more than I like the straight up and down, more fist look of the previous design. You also get these black front tow hooks in the bumper. Might be a little bit hard to see. The hood here is also pretty aggressive and has a nice design. Coming around the side here, there's a lot to look at, starting off with these side mirrors. These side mirrors here have these chrome caps for the LT package. You also get integrated turn signals. They can fold in, not power, but manually push them in, which is good. And they are heated side mirrors. And as you can see here, we do have that 01 off-road package and the nice badge proudly displaying that here on the front fender. The standard LT Silverado gets 17-inch wheels. We have 18-inch wheels, and these are bright silver aluminum painted wheels. And we're also rocking some Goodyear all-terrain tires. And as you can see here, we're also rocking the optional integrated sidestep. If you look at the door handle here, every door handle has a integrated button and this is for remote keyless access. If you got the key in your pocket, you just push the button to lock or push the button to unlock. Pushing the driver side button only unlocks the driver door, but pushing any of the other ones unlocks all the doors. And of course we got the keyless fob that you can lock and unlock the doors from, remote start the car, or remotely open the tailgate with. Speaking of the tailgate, let's take a look at the rear end and that bed. So you get a nice rear end design too with Chevrolet stamped into the tailgate. You can see the LT badge here on the bottom right corner and we get dual chrome tipped exhaust pipes. So like I said, you can open the tailgate from the key or there's a button back here. And it's an assisted drop. We have this factory installed cover. With these Chevy beds, you get up to 20% more cargo space than its competitors. It's got best in class bed width, best in class bed length for the short bed or standard bed lengths. And you really get more cargo volume in the short bed of the Silverado than you do on the standard bed 
for most of the competitors. The bed is made of high strength steel. You get 12 standard tie downs. Nine of those are removable accessory tie downs. We get the power release tailgate here, but there are also power up tailgates that you can get where you can not only drop the tailgate, but raise the tailgate all with the touch of a button. You can get a 120 volt power outlet in the tailgate as well. This one's not equipped with that, but we do have the LED lighting, which is always a nice to have. Another great feature here is the large corner sidestep. So if you need to access the bed, you get a nice step up here to get up. So that's the tailgate and the bed. Now let's check out what's going on under the hood. the hood you do have a lot of options you can get a 2.7 liter turbocharged engine you can get a 4.3 liter v6 you can get a 5.3 liter v8 or the big 6.2 liter v8 our truck has that 5.3 v8 this pushes 355 horsepower 383 foot pounds of torque and is matched up to an eight speed automatic transmission. This setup will get you 11,600 pounds of towing and will do about 16 miles per gallon city, 22 miles per gallon highway. And that is the four wheel drive 5.3 liter V8 with the eight speed transmission setup. All right, and with that, let's check out the interior and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, so let's start off with the rear seats here. They are extremely spacious, plenty of leg room here in this crew cab, plenty of headroom here, plenty of shoulder width. You also get two charging USB ports down here and your own AC vents. Whether you're using this for a work truck or family vehicle, this is definitely a comfortable back seat. Moving along into the front seats, we also get a really comfortable and spacious interior. So why don't you come in and we'll check it out. All right, so I thoroughly enjoy the exterior design of this Silverado, but one of the other complaints with the previous generation Silverados was the interior. But I'm happy to say that this one has exceeded expectations for me. I really like it. I've been enjoying it for the week that I've been driving it. And one of my favorite things about the, at least the model that they gave us, is this bench front row. If you've seen any of my other reviews, including the Lone Star Ram that had the bench front row, I really enjoy getting that because it means I can fit six people in here so I can fit my entire family in here. So that's really cool. So right now we have an armrest with some cup holders and a console, but if you lift it up, you get a whole nother seat with a seat belt, which is great for our eight year old son. And to get it back down, it's as easy as pulling a little handle there and plopping it back down. These are the cloth seats, but they are very comfortable and really nice and seem like they're pretty durable and can last for a long time. They are power adjustable seats and both the driver and passenger get heated seats. We also have a leather wrapped steering wheel and this is a heated steering wheel as well. Obviously you get the normal button controls on the steering wheel to control your infotainment system and the driver's information display. Now this is a basic driver's information display, but it gives you relative information and I usually leave it on your speed or if my fuel range is getting low, I'll leave it on the fuel range so I know exactly how long I can drive before I need to stop for more gas, which I already told you the fuel economy on this isn't great, so you'll be stopping at the gas station kind of often. Tech-wise, we do get an 8-inch touchscreen display. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integrations. And overall, I can't criticize GM for the infotainment system. It's decent, it's responsive, um, and it's pretty easy to navigate. You do get a backup camera in this truck, but you do not get a 360 camera, which if you've seen some of my other reviews, you'll know I think that's really important for big SUVs and trucks. Not that you can't park this thing, but it's so much nicer and more peace of mind if you are parking with a 360 camera. And right up front here, you do get a USB plug and a USB type C plug for plugging in your phone for the infotainment system.
So obviously because you have the bench front seat, you don't have a center console and your gear shifter is here on the steering column. I'm completely okay with that. Ram gets around this by having their shift by wire uh, knob that you can change gears in. Completely okay with that as well. It's all about getting in gear and going anyways. You can do manual shifts with uh, plus and minus buttons here on the shifter, but that's probably more useful for towing and going up and down steep grades. You do get a drive mode select. In this truck, you only get three modes. That's sport, normal, and towing. We can switch it over to sport mode. And it's a little bit more, and it's got a little bit more pickup, and it's a little bit louder. But I'm not a huge fan of sports trucks necessarily, so I just leave it off. What I do like doing in trucks is off-roading, and this has the ZR1 off-road package. That gives you goodies like off-roading suspension with Rancho shocks, a hill descent control feature, an automatic locking rear diff, an automatic two-speed transfer case, you get skid plates under the truck, you get a special heavy-duty air filter, and you get all-terrain tires. Now, obviously, if you're super hardcore at some off-roading, You'll probably want to still put beefier tires on this, but I'm sure they do the job quite well for your average light off-roading or driving around the ranch. As far as day-to-day -day driving goes, this is a very comfortable truck. There's very low road noise or even wind noise, so it's super easy to get up on the highway and just cruise. This is a big truck, but your visibility out of the truck is really good and parking it even though you don't have that 360 camera super easy and with that let's talk about the price the competition and we'll wrap this video up so the base crew cab that you can buy is 36,195. this lt crew cab with the zr1 off-road package has an msrp of 52,205. now that's a pretty good chunk of change but you are getting a few goodies with that we're getting the all-star edition package they cost 2,815 dollars that zr1 off-road package is 1,985 dollars the assist step package is 1,750 dollars having the 5.3 liter v8 under the hood is a 1,195 dollar option we also have a safety package on this that's 895 dollars and a transfer brake controller that's $275. So again, that's a pretty good chunk of change for a pretty mid-range truck. And obviously you've got to compare that to Ford and what Ram is doing. And of course the Toyota Tundra is out there. I think that the Chevy, in my opinion, is definitely above that now, mostly down to the powertrain options and the technology. The biggest thing that I've driven recently that would directly compete with this is that Lone Star Ram 1500. I'll leave a link in the description and in the iCard if you're interested in checking out that review. But it had the bench front seat. It had the four door design and it had pretty close to the same amount of tech. But with that one completely specced out, you're looking at 43,560. And down to a personal preference, I would definitely take the Ram over this truck. But that's not saying that I don't like this truck. This thing has really impressed me this week, and I'm really glad that I've got to spend a full week with it. Definitely if it was cheaper, it would be a lot higher on my list, but just the fact that they've done a great job in this truck has bumped it up significantly on my list of trucks. All right, guys, and with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the new Chevy Silverado, and as always, thanks for watching. Because, because I actually The assist step package is 1750